family and you speak to service, service, service. And I'm telling you right now, I'm not letting anybody in the Senate steal my joy. <laughs> I told you this at the beginning. I, I have, I, I'm embarrassed. It happened earlier today. I just look at you and I, I start getting full of emotion. I'm jogging this morning and I'm at the end of the block I live on. And I get terrified because I put my music on loud when I'm jogging, <laughs> trying to block out the noise of the, of the heart attack I'm having. <laughs> And this woman comes up on me, Matt practically tackles me, an African-American woman. And the look on her eyes, she just wanted to touch me, because I think, because I'm sitting so close to you, <laughs> and tell me what it meant to her to watch you sitting where you're sitting. And you did not get there because of some left-wing agenda. You didn't get here because of some dark money groups. You got here how every black woman in America who's gotten anywhere has done. By being, <laughs> like Ginger Rogers said, I did everything Fred Astaire did, but backwards in heels. <laughs> and, and so I, I'm just sitting here saying, nobody's stealing my joy. Nobody's going to make me angry, especially not people that are called in a conservative magazine demagogic for what they're bringing up that just doesn't hold water. I'm not gonna let my joy be stolen because I know you and I, we appreciate something that we get that a lot of my colleagues don't. I know Tim Scott does. When I first came to this place, I was the fourth black person ever popularly elected to the United States Senate. And I still remember a lot of mixed people, white folks, black folks work here, but at night when people are in line to come in to clean this place, the, the, the percentage of minorities shift a lot. And so I'm walking here, first week I'm here, and somebody who's been here for decades doing the urgent work of the Senate, but it's the unglamorous work that goes on no matter who's in offices. The guy comes up to me, all he wants to say I can tell is, I'm so happy you're here. But he comes up and he can't get the words out. And this man, my elder, starts crying. And I, I just hugged him, and he just kept telling me, it is so good to see you here. It's so good to see you here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I, I love my brother, Tim Scott. We could write a dissertation on our disagreements. He gave the best speech on race. I wish I could have given as good of a speech. But talking to the challenges and indignities that are still faced. And you're here. I was in the White House with my Democratic colleagues, and I'm, again, I'm in my joy. I can't help it. <laughs> and, and, and the president's asking our advice, who should we nominate and whatever. And I look at Kamala and we have a knowing glance, which we've had for years, when she and I used to sit on this end of this committee at times. And then I try to get out to the president what it means. What it means. And I want to tell you, when I look at you, this is why I get emotional. I'm sorry, you're, you're, you're a person that is so much more than your race and gender. You're a Christian, you're a mom, you're, you're, you're an intellect, you love books. But for me, I'm sorry, I, I, it's hard for me not to look at you and not see my mom, not to see my, my cousins, one of them who had to come here and sit behind you. She had to, be, she had to have your back. I see my ancestors and yours. Nobody's gonna steal the joy of that woman in the street or the calls that I'm getting or the texts. Nobody's gonna steal that joy. You have earned this spot. You are worthy. You are a great American. Your hero is Constance Baker Motley. Mine, she has sat on my desk for my offices that I've held. She's my icon of America. Her name is Harriet Tubman. There is a love in this country that is extraordinary. You admitted it about your parents. They loved this nation, even though there were laws preventing them from getting together. When they were loving, there were laws in this country that would have prevented you from marrying your husband. It wasn't that long ago, it was last generation. 
But they didn't stop loving this country, even though this country didn't love them back. And what were the words of your heroes and mine? What did Constance Baker Motley do? Did she, this country that she saw insults and injuries, when she came out of law school, law firms wouldn't even hire her because she was a woman. Did she become bitter? Did she try to create a revolution? No, she used the very constitution of this nation. She loved it so much, she wanted America to be America. As Langston Hughes wrote, oh, let America be America again. The land that never has been yet, but yet must be the land where everyone is free. Oh, yes, I say it plain, America never was America to me, but I swear this oath, America will be. That is the story of how you got to this desk, you and I and everyone here, generations of folk who came here and said, America, I'm Irish, you may say, no, Irish or dogs need to ply, but I'm going to show this country that I can be free here. I can make this country love me as much as I love it. Chinese Americans first forced into mere slave labor, building our railroads, connecting our country, saw the ugliest of America, but they were going to build their home here and say, America, you may not love me yet, but I'm going to make this nation live up to its promise and hope. LGBTQ Americans from Stonewall women to Seneca, hidden figures who didn't even get their play until some Hollywood movie finally talked about them and how they were critical for us defying gravity. All of these people loved America. And so you faced insults here that were shocking to me. Well, actually not shocking. But you are here because of that kind of love. And nobody's taken this away from me. So you got five more folk to go through. <laughs> five more of us. And then you can sit back and let us have all the debates. And I'm going to tell you, it's going to be a well-charted Senate floor because it's not going to stop. They're going to accuse you of this and that. Heck, in honor of your person who shares your birthday, you might be called a communist. But don't worry, my sister. Don't worry. God has got you. And how do I know that? Because you're here. And I know what it's taken for you to sit in that seat. Harriet Tubman is one of my heroes because the more I read about this person, the more, I mean, she was viciously beaten. Her whole life, she used to fall into spells, cracked skull. She faced starvation, chased by dogs. And when she got to freedom, what did she do? Did she rest? No, she went back. Again and again and again. The, star was, the sky was full of stars. But she found one that was a harbinger of hope. For better days, not just for her and those people that were enslaved, but a, a harbinger of hope for this country. And she never gave up on America. She fought in the, led troops in the Civil War. She was involved in the suffrage movement. And as I came back from my run, after being near assaulted by, a, by someone on the street, I thought about her and how she looked up. She kept looking up. No matter what they did to her, she never stopped looking up. And that star, it was a harbinger of hope. Today, you're my star. You are my harbinger of hope. This country is getting better and better and better. And when that final vote happens, and you ascend onto the, onto the highest court in the land, I'm going to rejoice. And I'm going to tell you right now, the greatest country in the world, the United States of America, will be better because of you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Booker. We're going to take a 10-minute.